Hello everybody, this is Tab Nation. My name is Tom and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Normally I'm showing you how to code in auto hotkeys and sometimes I do some showcase where I also show you how to code and use something. But today we're just going to be doing a demo of this really cool program completely written in auto hotkeys called Bitwarden Auto Type. Now I did not create this. This has actually been made by uh, on the Reddit user Anonymous1184. Great guy. I actually talked to him from time to time. Um, so I'm going to demo out what he created here. So if you have passwords where you're constantly needing to enter them in, you know, one website you have a completely different password versus this one, different usernames, so on and so forth. This is a great tool uh, for you. So I'm going to show you uh, how to install it, how to use it, and why it's beneficial. Because obviously there are other programs out there. Uh, Chrome comes in with a built-in password manager, but that's only going to work in Chrome. This will work across pretty much all you know programs, websites, browsers, what have you. It's really great, you know, video games, that kind of stuff. So the first thing you're going to do, and obviously I'll include this in the link below, is you're going to jump over to his GitHub. Uh, so here he is, Anonymous1184. Uh, down here, you know, you got a lot of information that you can go through uh, in case you want to read a little bit more into details. Also kind of see like what he has coming up. You know, he has his to-do list here and all that. But what we want to do is we want to keep this simple. We don't really want to look at all his code. You know, he's already done all the hard work for us. So we want to do the easy stuff. We're going to jump over here where it has uh, the current version, the latest version, which at the time of this video is 1.0.1. Uh, it actually looks like it just came out about two hours ago. So you're just going to click on there. It's going to take you here. It shows you know kind of what the changes he's made. And you're going to want to download this one right here, setup.exe. It's only three megabytes, so it should be pretty quick. I've already installed it, so I'm not going to show you that part. Um, but you'll get this little icon. You go ahead and run it. It does need administrative uh, rights to run, so you just say yes when you get that pop-up. Follow the uh, you know basic installation kind of stuff. Uh, download the uh, CL file when it asks you, that kind of thing. And when you're done, you're going to end up with this, the actual program shortcut, auto type. So we're going to go ahead and run that. I don't believe I have that running yet. Uh, oh, apparently my version is out of date. As you saw, he just released one two hours ago. Um, you can go ahead and push yes. I'm going to push no for now, uh, just for this video. And the first thing it's going to do is ask for your master password. So if you don't know what Bitwarden is, you do need to create an account. So once again, I'll link that in the description below. Uh, just, you know, on this website, run through the basic setups, what you want your username, your password, all that kind of stuff to be. Pretty simple, self-explanatory. And you're going to end up on this page without this stuff here. So we're going to go ahead and put our first password in. You're going to push add item here, and you're going to get a window that looks a lot like this. So here's some of the... Uh, fake information for anybody who wants to try. This is all fake. Um, so what do you want to name this? So I just named it logged in test. Uh, I'm using Facebook as you see down here. So if I wanted to, I could just put like Tom Facebook main page or, you know, whatever. Um, no folder. Don't really need to use that. That's just if you want to keep more organized. If you have a ton. Uh, so my username, I'm just saying that it's tests and a bunch of twos. Uh, passwords. Uh, I just put, uh, hey, all you people. That's my password, apparently. And then uh, if you have an authenticator key, you need to use that here. I do not because it's just Facebook. And then for the URL, uh, you can leave this blank. Uh, that means that this would work on all pages. Or if you put it in Facebook, this uh, autofill feature would just kind of target uh, Facebook. And you can just leave it at default match detection. There's a bunch of different options if you want to play, you know, like starts with, maybe I could just say starts with Facebook. Uh, but, you know, the login page for me is always just going to be facebook.com, so I'm fine with default match detection. Uh, and any notes you want to do, I mean, Facebook's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I need to really put any there. And I'm going to be entering it into text fields. So obviously those are text fields that uh, we're entering our username and password. Go ahead, push save. So I got those there, and I got two here, both for Facebook. 
And I'll show you the reason why I've created two here, because uh, it does kind of play around. Uh, it's useful if you have multiple users on your computer, or maybe you have two Facebook accounts for some reason. Maybe you have a business account or a personal account. So we'll, we'll take a look at that here in a minute. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and enter my pa password here, which is my master password from uh, Bitwarden, that website you just signed up for. I'm going to push OK. And then down here, the icon is going to change to a little syncing thing. Once it's done, you get a little system notification there. It means it's synced. The application now has the information it needs. Let's take a look here. Uh, so this menu, uh, Open Vault, that just takes me back to the Bit uh, website um, in case you want to go there and add or change passwords up. Uh, we'll come back to Generator in a minute. Uh, settings is the one thing we're definitely going to want to take a look at here. Now he does have plans to turn this INI file into a GUI, a uh, more user interface kind of friendly thing. Uh, that will be pretty self-explanatory, but till then, this will be kind of like the advanced way of changing your settings. So you got a lot going on here. Um, pretty much everything got a bunch of comments under it. So if you forget uh, what it is, you can, you know, kind of read it to get an idea. Uh, your bit worn in CLL path. Uh, actually, this could be blank. You technically don't need this uh, unless you're using the portable version. Uh, so you can leave that blank. Uh, doo -doo -doo, what do we got here? Uh, the oh, I forget what this stands for always, but... Uh, I'm not using this. This is kind of like a two-part authentication kind of thing. Uh, it's going to help uh, with splitting up your password uh, to prevent key loggers. Uh, that I will cover another video on. Uh, actually, just an auto hotkey in general, because that's kind of a really cool uh, functionality that you can use uh, to safely navigate away from a key logger. In case the key logger is there, you know, it will only get partial of your password, where activating this will make it so it doesn't. Uh, auto lock down uh, or auto lock. Uh, I just have it set for five minutes. That means after five minutes of me not using this program, it's going to go ahead and lock, in which case I will need to enter my password again. Same with the auto log out. Uh, that's 10 minutes. Uh, auto sync. And honestly, you know, doesn't really have to be that often. Uh, that's just syncing back up with uh, the Bitwarden. I have it at 10 minutes. Honestly, you could just put this like as a manual sync or, you know, put like hours between, there's really no point in it actually doing it very often as 10 minutes. All right. So that thing I was talking about where you have the multiple usernames or passwords for a single website, like Facebook right here, if you do, you're going to change it to one. And what that's going to do is when you go to try to log in and use this program, it's then going to ask you, which one do you want to use? If I don't, it's just going to use the, uh, the single one. But this is going to give me like a little GUI pop-up and let me choose my password. So we'll see that here in a little bit. Uh, like I said, if you only have one username, you can just leave this blank or uh, set it zero. Uh, updates. Do you want it to check for updates? As you saw when I started it, uh, I have one, so it did check and it did say that I was out of date. Once again, you can uh, check that one or zero, zero if you don't want it to check for updates, but I always recommend doing that. You know, this is a very new program, so lots to come. Uh, credentials, uh, you know, this is just my username uh, that I used to sign up for that website at the beginning of the video. So just put that in there. Obviously my password's not in here because I manually type that in at the startup of each time the program goes or when I get locked out. Uh, and then here I just put my uh, email address. This is uh, for some other authenticator stuff. So technically this doesn't need to be here for me either. Uh, your hotkeys. So right here he just kind of explains what hotkeys are in auto hotkeys. Uh, if you know auto hotkeys, you recognize what this stuff is. If not, that's basically saying that anytime like an explanation's there, it actually means alt. That's because you can actually adjust what you want to use down here. So. I have my default as F1 and default. What that actually means is it's going to be doing both my username and password when I'm on the website. Now, if I only want to enter my username, I can do right here. As you see, you got these it's like up here. So that's control shift U or uh, sorry, control alt U. That's only going to enter my username. If I do control alt P. 
it's only going to enter my password. You know, this, this one, especially right here, the password one can be helpful if the website remembers your username, which most websites do if you have it set that way. So those are pretty much what you want. I wouldn't really recommend messing with these too much unless your website's a little bit different. Uh, this is called the sequence section. And basically what happens is when I use my default, for example, it's going to first clear out the field. So anything that I have there, it's going to erase. It's then going to enter my username. It's then going to tab down to my password, enter the password, and it's actually going to press enter and auto log me in. So if you have a website where maybe like pressing enter in the password field doesn't work, you actually have to physically push a button. You might want to add another like smart tab right here and then press enter. Most websites, the functionality, the way he has it set up should be fine. But if you need to play with it, uh, you know, here's what you got. Uh, to play with uh, so but you should be good with the default I don't see why you would really need to change that now from down here you got a bunch of other stuff I'm not really gonna uh, go over this uh, until the next video um, and then obviously down here you got the whole uh, uh, do not edit beyond this point so don't mess with this stuff I don't even know what this stuff does so no point in looking at it so like I said you know, it can be a bit intimidating. This is an INI file. The settings are, you know, pretty self-explanatory, but, you know, might take you a second to read. There is a GUI coming out, which will uh, definitely clean this up a little bit better. Uh, I'm not going to save because I forget what I made changes in. All right, what else do we got? Uh, auto run. Auto run is if you click this, it's going to add this program to your startup. Program. So when you turn your computer on, this will automatically be running for you. Uh, here's that manual sync. You know, I can click that. It's going to change back to that little uh, syncing icon there. So it's just resyncing with the server. And there we go. It's complete. So you can manually do it too. I can go ahead and lock it. Maybe I'm walking away from my computer or log out. You know, if you want to manually do that. But I have all three of these things set up on timers. So I don't really have to worry about them too much. Now, before we actually see this finally demoed, there is the generator. This is basically a password creator. Lots of cool settings here. Uh, you know, what you want to do. Do you want lowercase? Do you want uppercase? Do you want digits involved? Do you want symbols involved? Uh, how long do you want the password to be? You know, different websites have different requirements. And maybe some... Uh, Websites won't let you use certain, you know, letters or whatever, and it generates a password. So let's say I want zero symbols. I want it to be, well, let's go ahead. So it starts actually generating for you as you do this. I want it to be 20 digits long. Let's go crazy. And I don't want ABC in there. Um, so yeah, there's my, uh, there's my password. So I can, you know, copy or I can manually copy. That's going to be a very advanced password. So you would take this, put it into your uh, Bitwarden thing. And, uh, you know, this is going to make it very... Uh, obviously, you need to change your website's uh, password too. Uh, but this is going to be like a super secure way. I mean, 118 bits, It's that's crazy. Nobody's ever going to hack this in their entire life. I'm sure there's a website out there that will calculate how long uh, it would take someone to hack something like that. And it's probably like not in their lifetime. <laughs> all right real quick let me move this over here we're going to jump over to facebook give me one second because i'm gonna log out there we go i'm gonna go ahead and erase all these fields Whoop. all right so completely blank we are still, uh, you know, logged in. If you're not logged in, these actually gray out, so that's one way to tell. Also, so I'm just going to click in the field I want. I'm going to go ahead press F1. Now, here's that thing I was talking about where I had that one, and I have two passwords. Yeah, I'm just going to pick the first one. So I'm just going to double click on it, and there we go. It just entered my username, my password. It automatically press entered. Now, obviously, these are fake, so this is going to fail here shortly. Yeah, so it did not work because, obviously, I am not that person. All right. 
I uh, hope you guys enjoy this. If you guys have any questions or find any issues, definitely let us know. Uh, I, you know, I keep in communication with the Anonymous 1184, uh, so I can definitely pass any uh, recommendations or any problems you find. I'm sure he'll be happy to find out about them and help you guys out. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Thank you.